obviously. I'm a Rod Peterson show. Uh, I'm the media spokesperson. Some people like to say loudmouth, uh, but I do help out where I can, when I can. And that's kind of true across uh, my whole family and everything we drew. Um, it's been a productive campaign. And uh, what you said earlier on about being absurd that Saskatchewan's never won it, we think it's a travesty as well. And I, I think Saskatchewan's behind us and it's going to change this year. That's what, but it's. I feel like it can't just be the province. It's got to be expats. It's got to be people that have no reason to vote for the other towns. So let's vote. I don't even know what the other towns are, and I don't care, because I'm all about winning this thing for Wolseley this year. I am. And but it's not just about the pride factor. You guys need it. Can you talk about what's up for grabs with this contest and why you need the funding from Kraft? Okay. So the big why why we're really pushing as hard as we are. Is two hundred and fifty thousand dollars for ice arena upgrades. Our ice plant is on year forty-four of a twenty-five year design. Uh, we were doing a great job taking care of it, uh, and the guy who was the master, his name was Scott Pollock. Uh, he was our volunteer fire chief, and he died in service to this community about three years ago. He had a massive heart attack fighting the fire. We've tried to do as good of a job as he did with this uh, old plant, but we can't. And uh, about a year ago, we started raising funds. We're just over $100,000 in a year, which I think is pretty cool for a community of 850 people. Um, and this craft hockey bill will get us so much closer. And it's it, we need it. We need it to keep hockey in this pro in this town. Get ready for the Rod Peterson Show. It's like Ravine, the famed illusionist. He would hypnotize the whole crowd. My dad always told this joke. He goes, oh, yeah. <laughs> Ravine was uh, performing at the center of the arts. He had the whole room hypnotized. And he said, the next thing I say, you will all do. And he got tripped up, tangled in his mic cord and tripped and went, crap. Took him two weeks to get the smell out. This is the Rod Peterson Show. Uh, I don't I don't know that that one's a true story, but that's my dad's story. So, yeah, hey, coming in hot. My stories are all true. I can't speak for my dad's. Yeah, it's episode number 1210 of your favorite David uh, daytime sports talk, talk show. Easy for me to say, the RP show on Game Plus TV. I'm going fast because we need to speed it up. We've got Rod Black coming up in segment two. We've got Rachel Holman in hour two. Ron McLean in hour two. And uh, later on this hour, Jason Langby, the program manager of the Canadian Football League Players Association Academy. So that's all coming up. Moose is back. He is, well, he's back with us. He's in Southern California. Moose, what do you want the viewers to know? Your discovery or your golf game or what? What do you want them to know before we jump into the sports talk? <laughs> yeah, no, uh, this is the best. I got out, got quick nine holes in before the show, then make a coffee, sit down, talk sports with you. I think this could become a permanent thing if things go well. I don't know. It's a good lifestyle. Okay, some foreshadowing there, folks. I don't know. I have no idea what he's talking about. But can you hit the quick six show horn, please? <laughs> uh, director Jordan, we'll go. <laughs> we start with the big story. And just so you know, we're going to talk about last night's NHL games in our quick six show topics. The playoff format, people saying it needs a change. NFL kickoff has been changed. We'll get your take on that. Tom Brady. There's some people that don't want him uh, being an owner in the NFL, and that includes NFL owners. That's coming up, NHL tonight and NBA. But last night's leftovers are these. There was, uh, I think, 12 games, 11 or 12. These are the focus. Zach Hyman scored his 51st goal of the season, 122 into overtime, giving the orders a 4-3 victory over Winnipeg and sending the Jets to their fourth straight loss. Leon Dreisaitl, Connor Brown, and Ryan Nugent Hopkins also scored for the orders who halted a two-game skid. We'll come back on these. I'm going to rattle through these like one-timers, and then we'll spend more time on it. Here in Sunrise, Pavel Zaka scored the winning goal with 2.21 to go in regulation, and Boston defeated Florida 4-3 Tuesday night. I've seen people here, Panthers fans on social Social media saying, done with this team. They've lost four or five. And it's like, okay, either bye bye or we'll see you in the playoffs. Either way, I'm done with you because I don't want to hear it from these people. In Toronto, 
Nico Heischer had a goal and two assists. Jake Allen made 42 saves, and New Jersey beat Toronto 6-3. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Jake Allen made 42 saves. Austin Matthews scored his NHL leading 59th. Uh, in Chicago, Jason Dickinson scored twice as Chicago beat Calgary 3-1. Seth Jones also scored for Chicago. Connor Bedard, who wrapped the blade of his stick in rainbow-colored pride tape for warm-ups on Pride Night, picked up his team best 35th assist. I don't know why they feel that's news, but it's in there. Jacob Markstrom got the nod for the Flames and made 24 saves in the loss. I saw the guys from the Barn Burner podcast. Do you see their photo sitting at the Gray Eagle getting ready for their postgame show last night? They looked like they'd been shot. Feel sorry for them. In Denver, Sam Montembeau made 27 saves, and Montreal upset the Avalanche 2-1. And let's wind this up where maybe this got the most pub. In Phoenix, Josh Doan had two goals, including the go-ahead score in his first NHL game, and Arizona beat Columbus 6-3. Those were just some of my highlights. There were actually several other games. Those were my thoughts. What are yours? How much were you paying attention there in Palm Springs? Yeah, paying attention quite a bit. Um, you know, not a great effort in the back half of that Leafs game for Toronto. So that's not great. Um, you need to finish games a lot stronger down the stretch and into the playoffs if you're going to be ready to contend if you're Toronto. But you're right, Josh Dome was the story last night. That's all my phone was blowing up with was he got his first goal and his second mm. and playing pretty well. It's cool that it's in the desert and all the rest that goes with it. Um, makes you feel old when the players' kids are starting to play at this level, but man, um, that was a cool story last night for him. Maybe it's a good thing that Shane Doan has moved on from the Coyotes and he's working for the Leafs because who really wants to work in the same organization as your dad? I didn't like it. I don't think you'd have liked it. Like, maybe when, if we were working for the same hockey team, maybe, but when we were on the farm, my dad was trying to get me to change the oil in a grain truck. And I was like slipping my hands down the side of the engine and my dad's like you might have to get your hands dirty rod and i'm like but i don't want to i think it was my, that was like my last day <laughs> i didn't like working <laughs> with my dad so maybe it's a good thing that josh doan won't work with shane doan you know what i mean by the way yeah I'm talking on talk, talk a couple of family things here for a second you heard me read the text from pearl over the last couple weeks. Pearl has found our show, Pearl in Calgary. Nice lady, a senior, and then, then she's, been, she's found her Facebook page. She's commenting on there. She's liking stuff. Can you believe I found out yesterday? She's the mother of Bruce Urban, the three-time <laughs> National Lacrosse League champion with the Edmonton and Saskatoon, Saskatchewan Rush, the grandmother of Brandon Urban, whom... We love, and I can speak for Darren because he's the same. We love them. And it was Bruce that texted me yesterday. He's like, Rod, I just want to tell you, you got, you got a big fan and my mother, Pearl. She watches every day. She called me with your topics of the day. And I said, well, I love that, uh, Bruce. I love that she's a fan. We love her. And if you ever want to put a lacrosse team in Sunrise, Florida, with me as the broadcaster, giddy up. I think that would be fun because I like a challenge and I like new things. And then back, speaking of family, with last night's NHL games, again, I believe there were 12, 11 or 12, whatever. Serena beat me in the breakaway picks. She had six right. I only had three right. And you know what? I don't mind saying it. I don't mind saying she really knows her stuff. Um, I'm not insecure. I can say it. And that brings me to point two with the standing she brought something up on our cats and bolts podcast yesterday darren there's a lot of talk here in these nhl press boxes that i'm talking with guys and gals saying they need to change the playoff format particularly the west where the top four teams one of those four teams is going to be bounced it's not fair and serena brought this up damn she's good by the way she was canada's first major junior hockey broadcaster 20 years ago but she got out of it because of the treatment she received way ahead of her time but she goes Okay, in the 80s, it was set up that they all played by the division. Did you hear anybody from Winnipeg or Calgary whining when they couldn't get past Edmonton in round one? No. It's the way. Have we changed so much as a society, Darren, that we could say, but it's not fair. 40 years ago, we weren't saying that. It's the exact same format 
plus the addition of the wild cards to make the provision so that the best teams get in. What they have right now is genius. This is genius what they have right now. But they might change it because of all the complaining. Do you think they will? I know. Well, I think they'll at least have the discussion and talk about it because they want to get it right. And we're in a society where the patience to wait it out five, ten years, you know, or more is gone, or at least it's dwindling. So they have to, the leagues have to have the patience. The idea is to have the rivalries, right? I mean, you got Toronto, Montreal in the same division, and Ottawa, great rivalries, and Boston, and now Florida. They're building those rivalries by playing teams multiple times in the playoffs. That's only going to happen when they meet multiple times. Well, it's going to take a decade for those rivalries to reignite and for those playoff matchups to happen more often. You need to be patient. If we're sitting here 10 years from now and you're not liking it and it's not working, then we should be talking about making a change, but not after just a few seasons. Well, this is... Um... This is this is today's in sports. Trust me, it's changed. Ch sports has changed. I guess if you whine enough, you tug on the teacher's skirt enough, you get what you want. Or your parent, I guess. Oh, they whine enough. Here, take your damn toy. Here, take your damn popsicle. Just so you shut up. So maybe they'll change it because they're whining enough. Never used to be that way. Nobody even complained in the 80s with the way this format was right now. Oh, we're losing a good team after round one. So what? Life sucks. Wear a helmet. Nope, not that way anymore. Anyways, Cats and Bolts dropping this afternoon from Podcast Junkie Studios, and Serena was at her cantankerous best. Um, speaking of changes, I want your take on this as the football guy. Kickoff returns are returning to the National Football League. Team owners approved a new rule that will make it an integral part of the game again. The major overhaul to special teams has been in the works for years. It takes elements of the kickoff rules used in the XFL and tweaks them for use in the NFL beginning this year. There were 1,970 touchbacks on kickoffs last season that now could be returns. So before I get your point, it's our poll question today for our friends at Key Auto Group. At the Key Auto Group, they're driven by safety, experience peace of mind with our comprehensive multi-point inspections visit keyautogroup.ca for automotive excellence what do you think of the change to the nfl's kickoff rule like it or don't like it put me down as a like it and while i'm not a football guy to the de to the degree that darren is i did broadcast in the canadian football league canadian junior football league uh u sports I know my, my way around the field, and I like it. And um, the NFL executives are saying this is a great day for football. The special teams coaches in the NFL are saying the exact same thing. This is a great day for football. Uh, the CFL, from what we hear this morning, is very close to making a change. There will be some change this year. We don't know exactly what it is. So I'm voting, yeah, I like it. Moose, what are you voting? I'm voting yes. I like it too. I think, you know, there's going to be some people that don't like changes to kickoffs and, you know, um, the special teams changing the way it's always been. Kickoffs have always been such a high collision game too, where that's where you cut your teeth as a young player. That's where you learn to play physical and earn your spot on the offense or defense. But it's going to change. And, and for me, whatever can promote more kick returns – doesn't matter if you're starting from a standstill, if you have the contact, if you don't have the contact, if it looks different. If you're promote, promoting more kick returns, I like it. I think it was something like less than 20% of the kicks in the National Football League were actually returned last year. So we need to get that number over 50%. And if this will help push the number up, I'm all in favor. I heard it was right on 20% were returned, 80% were not. So anyways, you can vote on that for the next 22 hours. By the way, this would be the time to mention it. We're going to spend way more time on this in hour two when Darren returns. Rod Black's coming up next. I'm just going to throw this in here for hockey playoffs tonight because we have a promotional deal with the Saskatchewan Junior Hockey League, and we love them. Tonight in the SJ, here are your playoff games. Melford at Esteban. The Mustangs lead the series 2-1. Kindersley's at Flin Flon tonight. The Bombers lead three games to none. Sweep the Bombers. 
Remember that, Darren? But the other way around. <laughs> Humboldt at Weyburn. The Broncos are up two games to one. And Battleford's at Melville. The North Stars can get out the sweeps tonight in the vault. From the text line, Bob in Saskatoon writes in 902-518-3033. says, Rod, I watched every game of women's NCAA basketball Monday. Great idea for their rise to play big games on Monday. They review tons of plays. The refereeing was excellent. I won't ask you, and thank you, Bob, for responding to my question yesterday. I said, everybody's bitching that... Iowa, they say the refs favored Iowa to win so that Caitlin Clark could advance through the tournament. And I would say if there was, I don't believe that there's a fix, but if there ever was, could you blame them? For the amount of jerseys <laughs> she's selling and the money she's making, the NC, could you blame them? And Bob's saying the officiating was excellent. Don't listen to them. I, I don't know how big it is in Canada. I've only, you know, lived there for a half a century. I don't think it's that big, but it, you, you watching TSN now and Sportsnet, TSN for sure, it's far bigger than junior hockey coverage that they get. So it is a big deal. But here in the States, Darren, this time of year, it's, every, it's everything. March Madness, it's everything. It is. It's everything. Um, it is massive. And to the, to the viewer's comment, a home run for the women to play Monday night. And you know what? I love watching women's basketball, right? I know you watched a ton of women's basketball growing up, you know, with, with girls who played um, and you traveled. I love women's basketball. It's entertaining. They can shoot like crazy. I watched the game Monday night and uh, Gonzaga put on a clinic uh, shooting the basketball. But you're right. Could you blame the refs if they wanted Caitlin Clark and Iowa to, to get through? The NCAA ratings are through the roof when she plays. Merchandise sales are through the roof. But I don't think that's happening. Everything I see on social media was her complaining about the refs, I thought, and swearing and yelling at the refs. That's what's showing up on my timeline. But uh, anyways, the women's basketball was fun to watch Monday. Well, this has just brought them out of their seats, the crowd writing in, whether it be the YouTube feed or the text line. I'll read a few. Colin in Ottawa says, it doesn't matter if you have the contact or don't have the contact. Dupes, kind of important that there be some contact in a tackle football game or else just put flags on and play flag football. Reserve your comment, Darren. You can answer that. Remember it in an hour or two. Allie t checks in from Texas. She says, happy Wednesday, RP and squad. Ryan in uh, Saratoga, New York says, it'll be a crazy weekend in Albany. For the NCAA women's bracket, especially with South Carolina, LSU, and Iowa in the same region. Regional. Uh, from John in Kansas City. He says, I love the SGHL updates. Go Broncos! John in Edmonton says, I guess it will be another year of an American NHL team winning the cup. Thanks, Gary. Janet, the Four Seasons, writes in and says, what about the hip drop tackle? 15-yard penalty now. I feel like that's more of a football Friday discussion or football Thursday, as it were. Carlos in Indianapolis says, what, when is the CFL going to change regarding kickoffs? Remove the take the ball at the 25-yard line option? Well, like I say, they're talking about it. And, hey, the NFL's been, they've only stopped playing for a month, and they made a change. CFL hasn't been playing since November, and they're still fiddle-farting around on what they're going to do. Moose, I'll see you in hour two. You bet. Sounds good. Rod Black is next. We're live on the Game Plus Television Network, WQEE Radio, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube Live. The sports landscape continues to change, and teams and facilities are under more pressure to provide online and in-venue entertainment. They need the right team to deliver their product. Look no further than IKS Live. We provide service across North America and produce the best fan experience across all platforms. We're all capable of doing more. More speed, more reps, more commitment to getting every detail perfect. And that's why it's important we never miss a donation appointment. Blood and plasma donors are needed every day in Canada to support thousands of patients that rely on Canada's lifeline. We're asking you to join the Hockey Gives Blood Partners for Life team. 
Join today by downloading the Give Blood app or book online at blood.ca slash HGB. Did you know that you can help save a life? And you can start right now. Stem cells from male donors increase chances of positive outcomes for patients, yet they only make up 40% of our registry. Today, there are hundreds of people in Canada searching for their life-saving match. You can be a patient's best hope. Be a hero by registering with Canadian Blood Services Stem Cell Registry now. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. BDG, always delivering the best fan experience. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have utilizing a fully integrated 360 degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. Hey, honey, can you get one of the kids to show me how this Twitter thing works? Honey, I need to get on Instagram. Time for more of the Rod Peterson Show. Hi, everybody. Here's an update. No Rod Black, they tell me. So to the guys um, flying the Millennium Falcon, can you send him a message or get Clark, too? He's never missed an appearance yet. And he's been on the show. You are? Okay. Been on the show dozens of times. Uh, by the way, folks, reward your love of movies by signing up for Landmark Extras for free today. Get more of what you love. Free movies, concession items, invitations to exclusive screenings, special events, and more. There are three rewarding programs to choose from that get you something extra with every movie purchase. Go to LandmarkCinemas.com for details or to sign up. I'll continue with my quick six show topics here without Moose. And hope to get Rod Black in. If not, you and I can handle it, right? We did it yesterday. Um, to my guy, Michael Wynn, he's watching in Winnipeg at Ice Time Sports and writes this on Twitter. With the, X, uh, well, the XFL kickoff being adopted by the NFL, with some small tweaks, Michael writes that he says, I love that they found a way to encourage more kick returns with some safety. Exactly right. I don't understand the downside of this. Why anybody would be against it other than calling in Ottawa, writing in and saying, well, there needs to be some contact. There's going to be contact amongst this, just not high-speed collisions. So I think everybody seems quite happy with this. Although on Twitter, um, it's about 50-50 from what I checked from our respondents. That's the poll question today for Key Auto Group. If you've ever been out on the end of a wedge buster, if you've ever performed that role, you'll be voting that you're happy with this change and the reduction of <clears throat> from long distances. Hey, I don't mind. I don't mind change, but I don't like change for the sake of change. And now's a good time to bring in the peerless, the ageless, the effortless, 
Rod Black. And you know, you've been on this show enough, Roderick, to know what we do here. It's a day, it's the view. It's the view for sports fans. You're Whoopi. I'm Joey. And we talk about the daytime, the day's events. So how do you feel about the NFL changing the kickoff rule to the XFL style? Um, I, I will tell you, as like you, uh, I am a big CFL fan, of course. Um, and I like, the, I like the kickbacks on the CFL. I, I like the fact that there's excitement. I can understand the safety part the last couple of years. Um, I'm not so sure this is entirely the best thing that can happen, but I can't tell you the... The game is called what? Football. <laughs> and the only time they kick is either a punt or a field goal. Um, may, maybe there's a misnomer there, but I, I do think there's a lot to it. Um, I, I, I'd like to see how it's going to play out. Let, let's put it this way. A lot of people did not see the XFL uh, or any other of the other yeah. leagues, uh, did not watch, so they wouldn't even know what this rule is about. But having said all that, um, I'm still, I think anything's better than still watching somebody kick the ball through the end zone and then coming back to the 25-yard line. I, I, I've never been a fan of that. I know. They said in the story over a thousand times that happened in the NFL this year. And it's like, yeah. you're a broadcaster like me. Hours of buildup on the pregame show. Yeah. We've all seen it. And then, boop, uh, we'll be right back. And, and by no the way, Ron, it was terrible. Uh, and I understand player safety. Trust me, I understand that. However, when you are involved in professional sports, there is an inherent risk that comes with a, a sport that's built on collisions and tackling and hitting. There is a reason we watch football. There is a reason we don't watch on Sunday <laughs> afternoons flag football. There's a reason. Right? There's a reason the Pro Bowl, a lot of people kind of, okay, I know it's going to the Olympics, um, but they, the NFL is full of some of the greatest athletes on the planet. I would love to see returns. I would like, I like the halo rule in the CFL on punt returns. And again, I, you're, you don't want to see anybody get seriously hurt. We've seen that in, in the past, but there's nothing like the dramatic return of a punt or a kick, the zig, the zag, the teamwork that goes into that. Right now, I don't know about you. I mean, beyond being a gunner in the National Football League and you're going downfield all the time, you never see anybody. I mean, the loneliest guy besides a Maytag repairman is somebody on those special teams. <laughs> because when the ball comes, they say, oh, here we go. Okay, all right. Or it goes through the end. Dude, I could make, if he gave me a contract to play on the kickoff return team, I'll take anything because I'm never going to see any play. Yep. Exactly. By the way, I was searching around for a, a flag. I found one. I'm throwing <laughs> one on you. I yeah, called the flag football national championships last year for USA no, football and will this Buddy, by, by the way. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, listen. I'm not, this is not to take away from flag football because I play it. I love the sport, but there's a reason that flag football is not – uh, contact football. I love flag football, by the way. I love it. And I bet you did a great job on that. And so I'm kind of sucking up to you now. <laughs> We're having fun here. That's what we do. Uh, so I want to flip gears here uh, to uh, college basketball and going. the Raptors, if we may. I know where you're going. You want to make a uh, bet? You might not. We'll see. No. Bentley. Bentley writes in from the Queen City. He says, Rod, about 18 years ago, my daughter was in California. I was visiting her. We were there in March. It was madness. The TV had nothing else on, all channels. It takes over the whole country. I was trying to explain to a lot of our viewers what that's going on here with March Madness, Rod. And with the women now and Caitlin Clark, that was where I'm going. Switching gears to oh, March okay. Madness. So you're a basketball guy, man. It's pretty cool what's going on. And it's actually seeping into Canada, is into the conscience of the Canadian sports hey. fan, I sense. Hey, for the first time ever, and I know we're, we'll probably have a discussion about it because I, I do have some thoughts on the proliferation of betting that's going on and the big stories that are surrounding gambling and sports, and I'm sure you've talked ad nauseum about it, and we should be talking about it, by the way. But also the beauty of the March Madness is that everybody has a pool. And Rod, for the first time in a long time, I'm actually leading one of the pools. Now, on the CBS Sports pool, I'm very proud of myself. Yes, I'm 56,000. 
972nd right now. But in my own pool, a bracketed pool with I think about 100 people, I'm actually leading. I took Yale early on because I actually broadcast one of their games early in the season. But I love madness. I love March Madness. I, uh, I think it was Bentley who, who wrote in. There's nothing, especially for the, the Canadian basketball fans, get a chance to go down to a regional. Even before Final Four, Final Four is really hard to get to and expensive. Go see a regional. You'll be there all day. There's nothing like it. It's great purity in sport because what I love about NCAA sports, and I've had two kids in my family who are NCAA athletes, is that they make mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes, including coaches, including refs, but also players. And it's so yep. hard to predict, but there's nothing like the vibe. Like, I know everybody talks about the NBA and going to an arena and, you know, it's, it's so cool. There's a big party going on. Go to an NCAA game and listen to the band. Listen to the students when they chant, start the bus. It's all your fault. There's nothing like March Madness. No. Hey, we move fast here. David, number one in Winnipeg, writes in. He says, good morning, Rod and Rod. How about that Jets-Oilers game? That was playoff hockey last night, and I love it. Hopefully the Jets can play like that every game from here on out. The Oilers won it 4-3 in overtime. Where I'm going next is your take on the playoff format. I'm hearing it a ton in the press boxes here in Sunrise and Tampa that we need to change it. It needs to go from 1-8, to eight, not the wild card yeah. format because the yeah. points are all screwed yeah. up and good teams yeah. are going to lose out in round one. Well, Serena said it. She's like, in the 80s, nobody bitched to the smite division. The, the, the Oilers were bouncing the Jets and Flames in round yeah. one. We didn't hear this. It's not fair. Do you think yeah. it needs to change? Well... We did say that in Winnipeg because <laughs> I, was a, I was living there. And I, uh, there's this guy, whatever, what, what's old, what's his name there? Uh, but he had a yellow little helmet there or whatever. What's his name? Uh, you know who I'm talking about. Anyway, if it wasn't for Gretz. A media guy Gretz, probably, or? If it wasn't for Gretz, if it wasn't for Gretz, uh, I, I still maintain the Jets might have made the playoffs a few a few more years and they never would have left in the first place but that's another story um i hate the format go back i think rod you and i talked about it two years ago i've never liked this uh regional format i i know some people say oh it still works out the best on best i disagree um uh, you know one to eight is logical one to eight is logical and by the way unlike those years when they said nobody bitched about it yeah, that was still regional because you were playing within the, the divisions, within the Smythe, within the Norris. Uh, you were still playing. And so there was a sameness to it. I defy anybody that you're going to get a sameness every year. One, two, eight will change things. It should be best against the – there should be an incentive for finishing first. <laughs> you know, play for all those points late in the season to get – home ice now did it help some teams last year no but again if you look at who they were playing and i know somebody some analytical dude's gonna say hey well here's one no 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 one versus eight it should work that way in every in, in my mind in every sport well now you really now you really got me thinking and that's funny you say yes we did complain in winnipeg we didn't have twitter then so i didn't hear you yeah people. yeah you know what i mean i didn't see yeah, it did, yeah like well I that's now. the thing then yeah, well, everybody can bitch now because everybody's a everybody. Hey, everybody's a broadcaster, right? Everybody has their own little radio, TV network, every little newspaper, so everybody can do that, which is fine. The world is full of free speech, but it doesn't mean it's right speech. There you go. Put it on his tombstone. Make a meme out of it. <laughs> well, we've covered NFL kickoff change, March Madness, and NHL playoff format. The floor is yours for three minutes. What do you got? What's keeping you busy these days? What's keeping you up? Well, um, I'm going to be in Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan next week for the Kinsman. They're dinner. bringing you back? I do that. Nice. Well, they, I, I, one of these years, I'm going to get it right. Uh, and I think they're trying to get you, but you're lucky. you got palm trees behind you, so I have to fill in. I'm, I'm the second best rod. Can I say that? That's right. like something from a... That sounds like from Pornhub. Anyway. Um, oh, <laughs> So um, I'm going to be there with Eric Gagne and uh, Duncan Keith and uh, Chris Pronger. So looking forward to that, which means I will not make my flight. Wow. It'll be a late night, of course, thanks to the Kinsman Club. Look forward to seeing people in the jaw. Uh, busy with that. Busy with this guy, these guys, the Toronto Maple Leafs. 
baseball team. I'm actually an owner now, Rod. I'm part of the ownership group, uh, Intercounty Baseball out here. But the biggest thing that I think really is occupying my space today, and we've had a conversation about this, and I know I'm not going to get on a high horse, that right now sports has to be very careful. We've talked before about the integrity of sport. Uh, we're seeing it really in full play this week, especially. Uh, hey, listen, I'm I'm all for legal gambling. Um, you know, I'm sure your your sponsors are are you have sponsors. I'm uh, you know would again work for North Star Bets for a bit, but I do have a hard time right now that we have got to be very careful with the proliferation of um, gambling out there, especially how it reflects on sports with the John Tay Parker situation, which is going to get I think really ugly. Uh, as they more comes out again a person is presumed innocent until guilty but there's a lot of smoke here and there could be fire and I would tell you also the Shohei Otani people are just going okay well it's the interpreter let's be careful let's find out exactly what this all is about because sports have been taken down uh, from this pernicious activity in the past we can't have this happen and We've got to be very, very careful. I think this is a really good wake-up call this week. And here we talk about betting and gambling and picks and odds and all of that. That's our life now. That ain't going away. But we have to be very careful. And I would say my suggestion as the NCAA is looking at it is they really have to stop putting so many prop bets up or could control prop betting because that, to me, is where a lot of these problems lie. And that's it, Rod. That's it for me today. I'm... Uh, I can't wait to get to the jaw. When am I going to see you in person? I have no idea, but I'm wondering if you swallowed a dictionary this morning. Proliferation? Yeah. Some oh, word I couldn't even... Right. Cardissus. Hey, suspicious. buddy. Buddy, what was buddy. It? You know what? It's scra if I'm Scrabble, I'm winning. Look at the, the surreptitious, salacious part of... Right. Online sports betting. Spicy. Anyway, whatever. I, hey, listen, whatever. It's uh, it's it's got. It, it, we got to be very careful right now. We're we're walking a very fine tight rope. I'm sure a lot of I your viewers it. and listeners. There are way too many ads in my mind. Way too many ads. People are are putting too much on this. It's all about the sport. It should be about games, and that's why our kids yeah. are inspired to play. And Rod, I'm coming down. You got a bedroom? Because I'm coming down to Florida in the yes. next few weeks. I was just gonna say. I was just gonna say. If we, when we're gonna see each other face to face is the next time you come to Florida, because I'll be here. I love you. We gotta run. Love Thanks, Rod. Love you too, pal. You. He's you, the buddy. best. Rod Black, the the iconic Rod Black, the first ever television voice of the Toronto Raptors. It's been all downhill since he left. We'll be right back with Jason Langby from the CFLPA Academy. The program manager will be right back on Game Plus Television, WQEE Radio, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube Live. IKS Game Day wishes to congratulate the city of Esteban and Affinity Place on their brand new center ice display. This state-of-the-art score clock features five LED faces with full motion graphics, scoring integration, and our new halo mounting system. If it's time for an upgrade, let us show you how to deliver the best fan experience. You can find us at IKSGameDay.com. The sports landscape continues to change, and teams and facilities are under more pressure to provide online and in-venue entertainment. They need the right team to deliver their product. Look no further than IKS Live. We provide service across North America and produce the best fan experience across all platforms. Foreigner, live in Moose Jaw. Foreigner is back. The Farewell Canada Tour. You're as cold as ice. May 13th, the Moose Jaw Event Center. Foreigner, with special guest, Headpins.
Tickets on sale now at sasktix.ca and the Moose Jaw Event Center box office. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. BDG, always delivering the best fan experience. We're all capable of doing more. More speed, more reps, more commitment to getting every detail perfect. And that's why it's important we never miss a donation appointment. Blood and plasma donors are needed every day in Canada to support thousands of patients that rely on Canada's lifeline. We're asking you to join the Hockey Gives Blood Partners for Life team. Join today by downloading the Give Blood app or book online at blood.ca slash HGB. At the Key Auto Group pre-owned division, we're bringing back that new car feeling. No matter what, it's new to you and priced just right. No hidden fees, prices you can trust, an upfront buying experience. And it's all at keyautogroup.ca. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have utilizing a fully integrated 360 degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. Send us your opinions now. We won't victimize you unless you really deserve it. Now, back to your host, Rod Peterson. Everybody, we are brought to you in part, as you should know by now, by Common Crown Brewing out of Calgary, turning your everyday common beer into an exceptional and unique experience. Give them a follow on social media, at Common Crown Brewing. They know that the best beer is the one that's earned... Well, switching gears up now, but staying in the football vein if Rod Black was that. Jason Langvey joins us. He's from the CFL Players Association Academy. He's the program manager. I welcome him back to the show. How you doing, Jason? The Academy's all wrapped up. Am I correct in saying that? I would say the Academy is, is yeah, undergoing its busiest season uh, ever. Uh, the Academy itself, I think the mentorship was a big portion that you chatted with a few of our members with, but we've got... Uh, ongoing programming all off season and, and even throughout the season for our members. So I appreciate uh, for the chance to be here and, and thanks very much for the opportunity. I apologize. I misspoke. You're right. So I, the mentorship in terms of the Toronto experience for those players has wrapped up. So yeah, the Academy continues. How did it go and what can you tell uh, our viewers and football fans about what went down and why this is so important? So the mentorship itself is uh, its now in its third, or just finished its third year, um, and it's something that I think it stands for a lot, right? The collaboration between the players and the league to be able to work on something like this, to be able to show that the players have an opportunity beyond playing to stick around this ecosystem. Um, we know and love them as players, as personalities, and I think it's integral to the growth of our game to keep those individuals that are passionate about the game uh, in some way, shape, or form around. And so uh, we just wrapped up year three, uh, and thanks to the amazing team over at the league, they basically put on three full days in the office of kind of breaking down each individual um, facet of the league, if it's, if it's finance, if it's ticket sales, if it's going through sponsorship, et cetera. Um, it culminated, they got to go to TSN for uh, the day and talk to the, the crew with CFL on TSN, and then they also had a chance to basically run the day for the regional combine in Waterloo. So a lot of the guys were counting reps at the bench press and were making sure the stopwatches were for the 40. And so I've heard nothing but uh, shining things from the members. I spoke to Richie Leone last week and, and he was very, very happy with everything that went through. And, and I know that he's one of those faces that we've had around the game for a long time. I can see him around the game. What do you, what do you think, Rod? <laughs> He'll be a model if nothing else. Just ask him. But. Here's the thing, Jason, you know, I know we're going kind of fast here, but this is the Players Association Academy. This is a mentorship for life after football, or maybe even during football, if they can find the time. 
Jason, you know that I was in the league for a very long time and still have a close association. I know or knew of very few players that had ever even thought about life after football. They just hadn't thought about it. <laughs> and guess what happens when it ends? Catastrophe. And by the way, the guys that did have a plan for life after football, even when they were playing, have gone on to be some of the most successful business guys I know. But not everybody's mm -hmm. like that. So I'd love to know where the idea of the academy started, and quite frankly, who should get the credit? Because I think it's, I think it's fantastic. Well, I really appreciate that on, on behalf of, of all the team that's put a lot of time into building this. I think I've been around the association in, in parts and in parcel uh, for a little while, since about 2012. I got to see the start of social media and, and obviously the change of, of the way that we promoted the game and all of those portions. Um, and that opened up communication in a way that we never had as well, right? To have feedback one-to-one -one rather than just through the player reps and, and historically even potentially you know, harder at times when you've got disjointed groups that you can't meet with constantly. Um, so throughout that time, we just, we heard and we heard again that there needed to be something the association offered. If it was just resume prep, if it was just interview skills, something to consider what life after football looked like. Um, you know, Brian Ramsey oftentimes quotes the number, but it's 2.9 years still, if we look at it as the you know average playing career in the CFL of our members. And so, that is, you know, I think if you look at the, the normal distribution, there's going to be individuals that play at 10 years like Richie and, and those Jake Thomases of the world. And there's a lot of individuals that might not get a chance to get to year two or year three. And so to consider that you don't always have the choice of when football ends, despite it being your primary focus, is something that I think we had to kind of maybe come together as a culture shift to a certain extent. And I don't know necessarily what the... Um, the catalyst was, so to speak. I think COVID probably was a portion of it. But since 2016, which is when the Academy was initially founded, I've just seen that members um, understand now that, that em empowering yourself beyond the game oftentimes doesn't limit what you can do on the field in terms of a performing athlete. In fact, oftentimes if your family life is at balance and you know that there's um, you know a rock solid foundation, you might be able to perform even better. And I think the, the story that's jumped out uh, to me recently is Larry Dean, who think, you know, just, just got yeah. retired and, and graduated, as they say, into the, uh, the writer's organization. And, and he got to choose that, I think, is how he basically framed it. And I think that's a powerful message, because if you've got something to choose to go from good to great, you know, it's, it's hard to imagine life doesn't get better. There's a player rep, Larry Dean, uh, formerly of the Rough Riders. He's moved to the front office. He's a Georgia product for our listeners on WQEE. I can't remember the town. It's like Hollow, Georgia or something. Help me out, Ryan, on radio. Down in the southern uh, part of the state. Do you have anything else about the academy before I ask you your thoughts on Grey Cup? Anything else, Jason? So the one thing that we're going to be going live today, and an exciting one, is uh, another big interest that our members have that I didn't know existed until a few years ago is firefighting. And so um, last year we had the mm. first round of essay based scholarships with our firefighting um, support certification and training division. We were fortunate enough to send four individuals through that program on a full scholarship. This year we, we've doubled that and so we're going to be having eight individuals go through um, on full scholarship to become certified firefighters like um, Mr. Rene Paredes who is still suiting up and fighting fires and guys like Mike Riley who did it before him. And Braden Lenius, Regina kid <clears throat> and uh, I think engaged to the daughter of a very close friend of mine. So these are all really good people. Tifton, Georgia is where he's from. Thank you, Ryan, or radio. Tifton, Georgia. Because he said to me, if you spell it backwards, it's not fit. <laughs> Why I got hollow Georgia out of that, I don't know. But what do you think, J uh, Jason, as a CFL stakeholder, steward as you are with the Players Association, that Hamilton Grey Cup mm -hmm. would win the event of the year from, uh, what is it? I don't know the association, Canadian Tourism and Sport or something Prestige. like that. Whatever it is, that's a big, that's a big deal. Yeah. Absolutely. I was I was fortunate enough. I've been at a lot of great cups and I think 
in 21, where they had the, the scaled down version, I, I sensed there was this enthusiasm that when they had the opportunity to do it right, it was going to be a show for the ages. And uh, I wasn't disappointed either as, as a stakeholder. We had a few footprints in, the, uh, in and around the week. We have uh, our kids camp that was a major success. We connected with Football Ontario and I had you know, close to 200 families sign up in less than two hours to be able to come and, and play football with our guys. Um, we had our, our headquarters that was sponsored by SAS Polytech again last year. And yeah, just the opportunity to meet and greet fans, have our members um, chat. I'm always, as, as a fan of the game, but someone that gets to, you know, interact with these players more than the, the lay fan, um, I'm always taking it aback at how much time um, every conversation seems to take because there's never never a bad conversation that a fan has with a player. And, and especially with the rivals, you come, you have your, your riders fans come up and talk to the blue bombers. It starts off contentious and then they're sharing beers by, uh, by the second or third conversation point. And, and it's always, yeah, it's, it's probably my favorite Canadian party. And it makes sense that the, uh, the Hamilton gray cup earned that nod. I congratulate everybody involved. Uh, it was a sharp group and they really pulled it off. You're a sharp guy too, Jason. I appreciate you coming on. Anything you need, you know where to find us. Keep it going. More than appreciate that. I got to get you some more Team CFLPA merch. I know you wear it proudly, and it's more than appreciated. Uh, uh, you know where to find me. I'll be here. I'll put it on. Thank you. Jason Langby joins us, CFL Players Association Academy program manager. We will be right back with a sports update and viewer takeover after this. Ron McLean and Rachel Holman in hour two. We're live on Game Plus Television, WQEE Radio, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube Live. Bridget Laquette. I'm a First Nation Olympic silver medalist and I'm proud to represent Indigenous hockey players across Canada. Each year, hundreds of Canadians need a stem cell transplant from an unrelated donor to save their life. Anyone can have a hard time finding a stem cell match, but for Indigenous peoples, it can be even more difficult because just over 1% of prospective donors on Canada's stem cell registry are of Indigenous backgrounds. Be a hero. Join me in Hockey Gives Blood in helping to make a life-saving difference to those in need. Register today at blood.ca slash be a hero. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. BDG, always delivering the best fan experience. Text 902-518-3033. 902-518-3033. Pick up your phone and text RP, that's Rod Peterson. Hee hee. Text 902-518-3033. One of hip hop's finest, Ice Cube. You better check yourself or you wreck yourself, cause I'm back. Straight into Canada tour. April 28th, Moose Jaw Event Center. I can't believe today was a good day. Among the most influential rappers of all time, Ice Cube. On sale now at sasktix.ca or the Moose Jaw Event Center box office. capable of doing more. More speed, more reps, more commitment to getting every detail perfect. And that's why it's important we never miss a donation appointment. 
Blood and plasma donors are needed every day in Canada to support thousands of patients that rely on Canada's lifeline. We're asking you to join the Hockey Gives Blood Partners for Life team. Join today by downloading the Give Blood app or book online at blood.ca slash HGB. Business owners and marketers. Okay, we know you think we're pretty cool. That's why we want you to share in the coolness factor. Partner with the Rod Peterson Show and market your business every weekday to sports lovers just like yourself. Take advantage of our many cost-effective commercial and promotional opportunities. Tell the world about your business. Yes, the world. Thanks to Game Plus TV and the Rod Peterson Digital Network. Contact us today and find out how you can be a part of Canada's fastest-growing sports talk show, The Rod Peterson Show. Did you know you can catch all the best moments from the show on all our social media platforms? Now back to the studio with Rod. Our producer, Rocco, tells me we've got three and a half minutes left in this segment. It's a shorty, so I'll jump right to it, then get to your comments. There are only two games in the NHL tonight, including one in Buffalo between the Sabres and visiting Ottawa Senators, who've won two in a row. In another game, the Tampa Bay Lightning host the Atlantic Division leading Boston Bruins. That's one night after the Bruins won here in Sunrise 4-3. Should be a doozy tonight at Amelie Arena. And there are 12 games in the NBA tonight, including one in Toronto, where the Raptors host the New York York Knickerbockers. The Raptors have lost 11 in a row. Sports updates brought to you by Landmark Cinemas. In theaters Friday, Godzilla and Kong. The new empire. The epic battle continues. Legendary Pictures Cinematic Monsterverse follows up the explosive showdown of Godzilla versus Kong with an all-new adventure that pits the almighty Kong and the fearsome Godzilla against a colossal undiscovered threat hidden within our world, challenging their very existence and our own. Starring Rebecca Hall, Dan Stevens, and Rachel House in Theaters Friday, Godzilla and Kong, The New Empire. Think I might have to check that out? Approved. Speaking of, to our audience, and gosh, we love them. John in Edmonton says, Rod, what do you think of the renderings of the Arizona Coyotes arena that are floating around the interweb? Uh, which ones, bro? Which ones of the 16 different <laughs> designs? It's not happening. So ask me more about where I think the Coyotes will move, and I'll tell you that it should be Houston or Atlanta or Utah. That's right, Darren from Utah. And I love the Valley of the Sun. I love it. To be honest, I thought that's where I was going to end up one day. I love it so much, Arizona. But it, why, why hurt? Literally fool me once, okay? Uh, 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 uh. BW in Edmonton says, will Leon stay? Can the Oilers afford to pay him? Yes, the Chances, I think the chances of him signing Edmonton are leaning towards slim. Oh, that's according to Darren Dreger. Where will he go? Yeah, that's not a topic for today. No, not, no. That's an Edmonton sports talk question, not here. We just got the, we got the playoffs to worry about, okay? Playoffs? Yeah. Calgary does not. Just enjoy the playoffs. Was, I don't hear any music. Or did you start it early? I heard it for a bit. Mm. Gotcha. Buffalo Bill writes in and says, Rod, when does the Bet Regal crown get commonly worn again? Uh, that's a good question. For now, it's been retired. The Bet Regal crown. John Ohm. Ohm. He says in all caps, I love Rod Black. Good. So do we. Hour two coming up, including Ron McLean and Rachel Holman right after this.
At the Key Auto Group pre-owned division, we're bringing back that new car feeling. No matter what, it's new to you and priced just right. No hidden fees, prices you can trust, an upfront buying experience. And it's all at keyautogroup.ca. We're all capable of doing more. More speed, more reps, more commitment to getting every detail perfect. And that's why it's important we never miss a donation appointment. Blood and plasma donors are needed every day in Canada to support thousands of patients that rely on Canada's lifeline. We're asking you to join the Hockey Gives Blood Partners for Life team. Join today by downloading the Give Blood app or book online at blood.ca slash HGB. The sports landscape continues to change and teams and facilities are under more pressure to provide online and in-venue entertainment. They need the right team to deliver their product. Look no further than IKS Live. We provide service across North America and produce the best fan experience across all platforms. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. EDG, always delivering the best fan experience. IKS Game Day wishes to congratulate the city of Esteban and Affinity Place on their brand new center ice display. This state-of-the-art score clock features five LED faces with full motion graphics, scoring integration, and our new halo mounting system. If it's time for an upgrade, let us show you how to deliver the best fan experience. You can find us at IKSGameDay.com. Pick up your phone and text RP, that's Rod Peterson. <laughs> Business owners and marketers. Okay, we know you think we're pretty cool. That's why we want you to share in the coolness factor. Partner with the Rod Peterson Show and market your business every weekday to sports lovers just like yourself. Take advantage of our many cost-effective commercial and promotional opportunities. Tell the world about your business. Yes, the world. Thanks to Game Plus TV and the Rod Peterson Digital Network. Contact us today and find out how you can be a part of Canada's fastest-growing sports talk show, The Rod Peterson Show. It's like Ravine, the famed illusionist. He would hypnotize the whole crowd. My dad always told this joke. He goes, oh, yeah. Ravine was... Uh, performing at the center of the arts. He had the whole room hypnotized. And he said, the next thing I say, you will all do. And he got tripped up, tangled on his mic cord and tripped and went, crap. Took him two weeks to get the smell up. This is the Rod Peterson Show. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the RP Show Hour 2. Coming at you from beautiful and sunny Florida. Did you know they call it the Sunshine State? We're awaiting our co-host, Darren Moose DuPont. He'll be with us shortly. Uh, as a matter of fact, they tell us we have him now. This is a very big hour because Ron McLean. Every time I hear that name, I think of Mark Lee saying it. Ron McLean will be with us next segment with Moose because I got to take off. I have something to do here. Uh, middle part of the afternoon in Boca Raton, Florida, that I can't stay to the end of the show. So Darren gets to interview Ron McLean. Um, for the next 15 or so minutes, though, it'll be Moose and I talking about whatever we want to talk about and what the viewers want to talk about. We got through a very hectic hour one, and I will just say this. Colin in Ottawa writes in, he loves to have the football debates. And actually, that's where we left off with you last hour, so maybe we'll pick it back up. You and him going back and forth on contact <laughs> in football and how much there should be. Um, Colin in Ottawa says, Rod likes the humidity of Florida more than the dry heat of Arizona. Uh, I guess that's not the entire reason I was here, but when I was spending all that time in Arizona, it would be cold in the winter-ish.
like zero Celsius going, what the hell? I came to Arizona for warmth, not this. And I'd be <laughs> looking at my weather app going, it's in the mid to high 20s in South Florida right now, and it's January. What the hell? And so, yeah, I like this climate better, but I can guarantee you I don't like this snow and cold at all. I'll take them both over that. Um, but I do plan on coming home this summer. The question is to where that's still being sorted out. And by the way, Rod Black was with us a lot. And have you noticed, Rocco, our producer, that he's in for Clark today? It's always awkward at the end with the, rod, the two rods. It's always awkward. We don't know how to end it. It's a Seinfeld episode. I, you know what I mean? I, other than saying, just saying, bye, Rod, and cutting it. We don't know how to end it. It's not a, I don't think it's a failing of either one of us. But he said, Darren, with regards to contact in football, and the NFL kickoffs being changed to XFL style, he goes, well, we can't have flag football because nobody watches that. Did you see that? I literally, hey, threw a flag. Hello, guy. I'm the voice of USA football, flag football. Darren's my color guy. Hello. <laughs> you should have seen his face. He immediately backed <laughs> up and didn't know what to say. Uh, flag football is entertaining, and it is fun to watch when it's played right. And trust me, it's going to be in the Olympics in 2028. And I plan on broadcasting this year's USA Football National Championships in California. So anyways, do you and Colin want to pick up your argument over, uh, you know, are they moving too much of contact out of contact football? What do you think? I don't think so. I, I think, you know, the contact is still a part of it. There are still big hits in the game. But, you know, the game has changed a lot. It's become more wide open, just like in hockey with more skill. Um, you know, we're seeing, you know, receivers and the Tyree kills and, you know, the shifty running backs who can catch passes out of the backfield. You know, Derrick Henry is the exception, and Derrick Henry is a treat, but he's really fast. When's, you know, we don't see too many Derrick Henrys, Jerome Bettis's, big physical backs anymore. Everybody's getting smaller, more skilled, and the big rough and tumble in the trenches, physical, physical, physical football isn't quite the same focus as it was a number of years ago. And, and look at, we play fantasy football. We do um, betting on props. Nobody bets on the number of hits there's going to be in a game. Nobody has a stat that we're tracking on fantasy for, for tackles or big hits or anything like that. We track catches. We track touchdowns. We track passing yards, rushing yards, right? That's what we remember out of the game. So I know we don't want the game to be completely different in turn to flag football, and I don't think it will. But the hits aren't what we remember in the games. Yes, the odd big hit, but it's the skill that brings people to the stadium. Well done, Moose. God, I admire you. See, give you a topic that you're passionate about and you know, you can go on forever. I'm the same, but I couldn't have given that. Brent here in Wellington, Florida, writes in and says, looking forward to having you in Wellington for USA Flag Football Tournament April 13th. I can't wait to be there either, Brent. I'm very much looking. No, I'm serious. What are you laughing at? What are you laughing at? No, I just love that we are juiced up about flag football like this and, and, you know, events. It's amazing. I wish you could have been with me at Super Bowl because all the guys that, all of them, that we were with in Charlotte, North Carolina last summer were there in Vegas. And they were like, where's Darren? Where's Darren? I'm like, they don't let, they won't allow him into the USA. <laughs> I didn't say that. I'm just joking. I'm, not, I'm just joking. So anyways, that's one of the topics. And then, Oh, man. You know, we go so fast at hour one that it's, it's nice to just whew, hear an hour two and slow down. Like Rod Black literally kind of convinced me. I'd love to see him and Serena go at it. She's our hockey analyst and one half of our Cats and Bolts podcast that we do on the Panthers and the Lightning. And, you know, we were, I was quoting her where she said in the 80s in the Smythe division and all those tough divisions where they played within their division, nobody complained when the orders beat the Flames or the Jets in hour one, or the odd year that Vancouver would get in. It was tough then. So it's tough now, in this, and now they want to change it away from what it is because we're going to lose one of Dallas, Winnipeg, or Colorado in the Central Division. And it's like, it's the same thing now from 40 years ago. And Rod Black <laughs> said, we got to go to one versus eight because this ain't right. 
If you finish first, you should have the ability to play the weakest opponent who's eighth. My thing is literally, Darren, it's 16 good teams. Uh, and I want to say these are pretty smart guys and gals sitting around the table. I do think that. It's amazing to think that there were 21 teams in the NHL when we were first having this discussion in the 80s, and now there are 32, but there's still the same amount of teams in the playoffs. You know, they all were good back then, and I just felt like nobody bitched, and Rod's like, well, yeah, we did in Winnipeg. I just didn't hear it. Um, but so Rod's saying go to one versus eight. She's staying stay by the division like it is now. How would you vote if you were sitting around the... NHL owners table on this I would say you know you got 16 good teams you want to have yes the best standing at the end but the rivalries matter I think it's fine I would say look at whether we like this system or we don't like this system we haven't given it enough time to understand if it works or not <laughs> like let's have this conversation after 10 or 15 years let's stick with it for a bit because look at you're going to switch it and be happy that you're not facing the Oilers. And as a result, you're going to have to play Nashville or you're going to have to play um, Dallas or you're going to have to play Colorado or somebody, Vancouver, somebody good. There is no getting away from it. And the best mm. example I can give you of that is last spring when Leaf fans didn't want to play Boston, right? They said, we don't want to play Boston too difficult. We want Florida. We want Florida. And then you got your clocks cleaned by the Panthers. There are no wins in this situation. You got to play good teams. And if you're worried about that, trying to tiptoe around the easiest path to a Stanley Cup, you're not going to win anyways. Rod McLean, Ron McLean. It was Rod Black last hour. Ron McLean next segment with Darren because I got to run. Call it in Ottawa just, just to back up for a second. He says, good points, dupes. I'm not completely against the new kickoff rule in the NFL. I just hope the CFL analyzes how it goes down south before adopting it. Um, CFL sounds like they're close to changing their kickoffs as well, but it's not going to look like either of this. Um, I'm trying to stay on point. I closed my eyes for a second because I didn't want to lose my thought. Yeah, this. That's why I say if you were an owner sitting at the table, that's why we talk so much on this show and have through 1,210 episodes about ownership. And Ron McLean, if he's watching now, would, would agree Rod Black, too. Anybody who's been around this, the owners are everything. They're the ones that make the final call. They voted 29 to 3 in favor of changing to this new XFL kickoff rule in the NFL. It'll be the owners that vote on changing the playoff format in the National Hockey League. See, it's very important that you have a good owner that has a clue. Some do, some don't. The guy here has a big-time clue, and here's an interesting story for you. I was walking into the rink last night here in Sunrise, and to say that there was a helicopter sitting right across from the rink would be an understatement. It was like a battleship with a propeller on it. And I said to the security guy standing there in the parking lot, I said, who's his? I said, is Trump here? He's like, no, Panthers owner. And I'm like, oh, oh. Cool. Vinny Viola, good guy. You don't ever hear his name, do you? Nope. I'll answer that for you. Nope. For a billion dollars, nobody could answer that question. And I just think it's very interesting that it's the owners that are sitting around the tables voting on this. And I don't even know really necessarily what my point is on that, other than the fans need to know that it goes literally right to the top. And that's why I kind of wonder... If it will be changed or not. I'm with Darren. It's 111 Eastern, by the way. 111 Eastern. If you observe. Do you want to pick some NHL games for tonight? Yeah. Okay. There's not, there's only two games tonight. Uh, by the way, I swept you the other night. I had two <sighs> right. You had two wrong. Of the two games. Yeah. Sorry. Serena beat me last night, but that's not a surprise. She knows her stuff. She picked six correct games, and I just got dummied last night. I picked three of 12 right games. I got dummied. I don't know. I think I got psyched out going up against her. That's what I think. Nothing against you, Darren. Just saying. Yeah, I get it. Go. Ottawa 
at Buffalo. Who wins? Ooh, I'll take the Sabres. That's perfect because I'm going to take the Ottawa Senators. And what's really interesting about that is <sighs> anybody that watches Ottawa, and let's exclude Sens fans because they're biased. Anybody who watches the Ottawa Senators with a non-biased eye goes, why are they so bad? <laughs> they got a lot of great players. And Eunice Corpusalo is a fantastic goalie. Was he was in net when they won their only playoff series for Columbus. Why is Ottawa so bad? We don't really know the answer for that other than they fired everybody. <laughs> so they're starting over. So, yeah. Hang on, Allie. I'll get to your comment in a second. The Boston Bruins at the Tampa Bay Lightning. Who do you like in that one? I like Tampa to beat Boston tonight. Um, so do I. I think because Boston played here last night and expent a lot of energy. As I was saying last hour, I was advised by somebody that I pay a lot of money to to advise me to stay. I think, I think her phrase was block out the noise. So I'm staying off social media for as much as I can other than just going in there for what I need. But to sit and surf and go down the rabbit hole, not wise. Not wise for a lot of reasons. Uh, but one is the Panthers fans. Insert blank fans. It's any of the team's fans. It just, I can't. And they're like, I'm done with this team. This guy sucks. Fire that guy. Sunday night, they wanted to carry Paul Maurice out on their so shoulders. And then they lose, and they want everybody fired. It's just too much. Um, Allie in Texarkana says, as much as people love football, you have to accept whatever they do to make the game safe so it can continue. I would accept whatever I have to to keep hockey around. Don't inject common sense, Allie. That's never been part of it. <laughs> She's... Did it take a woman to come in here with a level head to make sense of it all? And I, the reason I say that is the fighting that I saw on the kickoff rule. Oh, kickoffs are dead. Oh, they're killing football. Oh, no contact. I guess what the counterpoint to that would be, people would say there will always be football players. They're literally treated like they're disposable, <laughs> really, by the teams. There will always be, so what if he broke his leg in 18 places? Get up, you're up! So, I don't know. Just know. smile because it happened. You know what I mean? Smile because it happened, because we're never going back to the way that it was. In anything. Uh, Brent in Florida says, I agree with you, Moose. Any playoff team has to win four series to win the cup, and you have to play the team that earned the right to be there. Well, has anybody thought of this? The Boston Bruins last year were the number one team, set a record. Best regular season ever. They played the eighth seed, the Florida Panthers. <laughs> You know what I mean? So if you wanted your yeah. one versus eight, there's an example of how it didn't work out. So anyways, uh, Brent, I'll end this on this. Brent in Wellington, Florida says, Florida fans have a lot to learn and can learn more from Cats and Bolts. That's the podcast that Serena and I host, and it is Florida's most watched hockey show. And this week's episode drops this afternoon on YouTube and Spotify and all the rest from Podcast Junkie Studios in downtown Boca Raton, Florida. I got to run. Moose is next with Ron McLean. Are you ready? You betcha. Do you want to ask him <laughs> any questions as a warm-up? <laughs> we'll be right back here on the Game Plus Television Network, WQEE Radio, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube Live.
The sports landscape continues to change, and teams and facilities are under more pressure to provide online and in-venue entertainment. They need the right team to deliver their product. Look no further than IKS Live. We provide service across North America and produce the best fan experience across all platforms. Pick up your phone and text RP, that's Rod Peterson. <laughs> We're all capable of doing more. More speed, more reps, more commitment to getting every detail perfect. And that's why it's important we never miss a donation appointment. Blood and plasma donors are needed every day in Canada to support thousands of patients that rely on Canada's lifeline. We're asking you to join the Hockey Gives Blood Partners for Life team. Join today by downloading the Give Blood app or book online at blood.ca slash HGB. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. EDG, always delivering the best fan experience. Nestled in the scenic Quapel Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant, and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. A fully stocked golf shop staffed by PGA of Canada professionals is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tee time, family event, or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest-growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us, and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have, utilizing a fully integrated 360-degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. Send us your opinions now. We won't victimize you unless you really deserve it. Now, back to your host, Rod Peterson. Yeah, not Rod Peterson. Darren Dupont in with you here from uh, Southern California. Making me work on vacation, but Rod's got places to be and uh, out for the rest of the day. But we've got lots in store for you here for the rest of hour two, including the newest world curling champion, Rachel Holman, joining us in a little bit. Ron McLean here right away, and uh, we'll get some more of your comments as we roll through the hour uh, for the rest of the uh, the program. What have we got? 40 minutes left in the can. So uh, Rachel Holman on the way, but let's bring in Ron McLean from... Hockey Night in Canada. Ron, uh, how are you doing, man? Uh, well, welcome to the show. It's uh, good to be here, Darren. And uh, I just saw Rod Black. Did he mention in the last segment that we were together? <laughs> no, he didn't. Uh, where were, where yeah. were you and Rod? Friday, we were at the uh, Canadian Blind Hockey Championships. We're held at Mattamy, which is the old Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. So it was great to see Rod and reminisced about uh, actually a ton of things, but especially the 87 Canada Cup. Rod was hosting. I was just there as a spectator back in 87, uh, but he's a dear friend. We have a, a mutual connection. Uh, Leanne Harrower was the makeup artist who does Rod for all his stuff at CTV and always worked at Hockey Night in Canada too. So she was kind of the uh, one, the informant whenever I needed to know what Blackie was up to. Uh, anyway, that was a very special event. The blind hockey, uh, I can't tell you how great it is. And uh, we have 19,000 uh, kids in Canada have uh, visual impairment. Uh, one thing's certain, they can be a hockey player because it's uh, it's just the skill levels off the charts. They had the national team split into uh, kind of an inter-squad to do their final selections off to an international at St. Louis, Missouri. Very inspiring and nice to see Rod. Very cool. Very cool. couple of spinoffs on that. One, what's really cool about shows like this and podcasts is we get to learn the personalities of everybody. And, you know, for our viewers, Rod's viewers, 
Rod Peterson's viewers, largely a CFL audience coming in, knew Rod Black from his days calling the Canadian Football League on TSN and uh, calling various games, but didn't know Rod Black. When he came on this show, he's got a ton of personality that we didn't really know about, and uh, he's on here wearing a wig. He's got different things going on, uh, quite the character, and it's, it's, that's one of the things that we miss on live TV. For sure. Well, I remember the 87 Canada Cup, uh, Don Cherry's restaurant downtown Hamilton. So they were playing the the last two games were at what was then called the Cops Coliseum. And Rod was the host for CTV, but he was playing uh, bubble <laughs> hockey with me in the bar, you know, the night before the game. And I, I got to love this guy. He's uh, He's got a little red deer in him. But uh, yeah, a good friend. And he, that was an amazing uh, spectacle, of course. That While Rod and I were playing bubble hockey at Don's old bar, uh, Team uh, Soviet Union was over in Brantford at Wayne Gretzky's house at 42 Variety Avenue. They actually invited the KLM line and a bunch of the guys to come and visit at Brantford so they could have a beer. Those guys never got to drink during, uh, you know, the regiment of uh, Soviet hockey's system. Uh, right. So Wayne had them over. I don't know if that helped them eke out a 6-5 victory, but <laughs> couldn't have hurt. Yeah, and that's a great story, too, and sneaking the Soviets in to, to have a beer with Wayne and, and uh, during that was, was unreal. The other spinoff for that was had the chance last winter in Moose Jaw to call uh, the World Sledge Hockey Championships, the play-by-play -play when it was in Moose Jaw. So you talk about the blind hockey, the sledge hockey. Um, there are so many talented athletes uh, playing the game that just aren't playing it at the National Hockey League level. Well, Billy Bridges is a pal. Uh, his wife, Sammy Jo Small, a goaltender for Team Canada, won a gold medal at the Olympics. Uh, Billy, as you know, is a multiple uh, world championships. Uh, he, he was also a great basketball player, a wheelchair basketball player, so spinal bifida, uh, but just a world-class athlete with a howitzer of a shot. He and Wendell have the two hardest wrist shots that I know of, and <laughs> he can wing at 85 miles per hour, one-handed, uh, just a great hockey player. So, And that's the big goal for the vision impairment is to get into the Parasport uh, Olympics, Paralympics, uh, with their with their. The problem they have right now is the United States is great at uh, sledge hockey, but they aren't yet up to speed on uh, on the blind hockey program that we have. So we need to get other countries right to get Paralympic uh, designation. That yeah. was curling. So you'll recall curling used to struggle to be part of the Olympics when I was at. Uh, 88 games it was a demonstration sport uh and they finally got in in uh, as a demonstration in 92 at alberville and that was sort of the ticket or the path to uh, eventually jennifer jones repping us first and sandra schmerler obviously yeah right it needs to be something where multiple countries can be competitive you can't just have the medals handed out before we play but you know you, you talk about the game, the NHL, and that's kind of what I wanted to get to um, first with you was I, I find it interesting. Now, there's the Zach Hyman thing that's going on on social media in a negative way, but that's he's got 51 goals. Um, Matt Rempe has become this cult hero in New York, um, you know, and we're starting to uh, almost promote, not promote fighting, but it's become kind of a, a title card, you know, um, on, on Saturday night, um, we're mm -hmm. seeing multiple players score 50 goals. Does it feel like a throwback to you? Because it, it kind of sure. feels like the game yeah. is in a throwback era. Well, in the last 100 years, we had uh, two times where there were 100 hat tricks scored in the NHL. And this year, we're at over 102 last I checked, and there was probably a couple in the last two days that would up that total. So that's very rare to have that. You had all these third-period rallies again last night. Those Nashville Predators, unbelievable. So you're right. We're seeing the offense. Uh, but Rempe just appealed to you know the, the idea of a Calgary kid who was off the radar a little bit, uh, takes the biggest stage of them all, right? When you can go into New York City, I made the mistake you talked about social media i was trying to explain to bobby mcmahon that he, he's got a little cock of the walk in him and glenn sather certainly had that and he came from wainwright same hometown in alberta so i thought there's something in the water there um but you know rempy did it in new york and when you do it in new york the problem is everyone kind of around the scenes has said uh john scott notably and i know kevin bx was even inclined to maybe write and send a few notes to jacob truba or somebody to help the kid protect himself if he's going to go heavy into the fighting right away uh, um, you know, these are men, even though he's got the size, these are professional fighters, you know, so you've got to be careful and you've got to be careful that the New York media doesn't sort of get you caught up in the, in the vortex and you do more than you need to do. So, but he seems to be a great head on his shoulders. He played for Chris Knobloch in Hartford. 
he kind of learned the ropes a little in the American Hockey League. So it's not like he stepped right out of Calgary into Madison Square Garden, fight capital of the world. Um, but, you know, we're all watching to, to see that he comes through this without uh, getting dinged. Yeah, it was, you know, I thought kind of that, you know, when he, when he had the hit and, you know, um, kind of crossed the line maybe a little bit, the little bit of the heavy play, that can be easy for a young player when every night they're looking at you to say, what are you going to do next? What are you going to do next? How are you going to, you know, take it up a notch from here? So I like that, that, you know, y y you do have to learn how to play within the line a little bit. My favorite story, Darren, uh, it was told to me by Wayne Gretzky, not to drop names, but uh, it was a story of, you know, Dave Brown, what a great fighter. Maybe you don't, but Dave Brown was an incredible fighter in the National Hockey League in the 80s. And uh, he was a rookie in Philadelphia, and his stallmate was Bobby Clark, the legendary Flynn Flom bomber. They have a great team this year. Anyway, uh, he they says do. to Bobby Clark, yeah, it's neat to see. Uh, he says to Bobby, hey, listen, uh, I'd like to kind of make a name for myself. We're playing our arch rival here, the Boston Bruins. Who do you suggest I go with? And Bobby Clark said, look, Dave, you're a big man, mountain of a man. But as I said, these guys are like trained assassins. They're men, and they would kill you as soon as look at you. You got to be careful out there. Here's the deal. If somebody challenges you, you don't back down. But don't, Dave, go looking for trouble. That is a recipe for disaster. Just, just play your game for now, and if something shows up, then you show up. And then Dave Brown walked away to go to the bathroom. He's standing at the urinal, and Bobby Clark yells from the dressing room, of course, I never cared much for Milbury. <laughs> so that, that was his marching <laughs> orders, go get Mike Milbury, which, is a, which was a funny story. But you, he learned from Clarkie, and uh, you know that you need those mentors, and there's, there's plenty of people to show him the ropes. I would say Truba would be a guy who's big and throws those you know Scott Stevens-style hits and will teach Rempe how to keep his arm in or how not to leave his feet, and tricks of the trade. It takes time. Uh, for sure. We're, we're seeing the mentorship in Chicago, Nick Foligno and Connor Bedard. That's been kind of fun to watch uh, develop. But how about in Arizona last night with, uh, you know, the young Doan kid uh, and his so debut? Cool. And I'm not sure who's mentoring him in, in Arizona, but uh, pretty cool opportunity last night for him. Yeah, Josh's debut was uh, just amazing. And uh, Shane, obviously, you're never going to get a better mentor than Shane Doan. So he's connected to Katrina LeMay Doan, who I had the you know, joy of covering and speed skating and Bart Doan, uh, you know, there the, the, was lots of connections there to Shane. And so I got to know him very well and his work uh, around the league, not just as a player, but uh, around the NHL. Uh, what a voice for for hockey. So that's that's neat to see. And uh, the Connor Bedard, uh, Luke Richardson is the coach there who I adore. Uh, really special gentleman. So he's going to have, you know, somebody shelter him when he needs it. Because uh, they really, I, I, I was amazed at how he was everywhere at the start of this season. The NHL really did run with uh, the marketing of Connor Bedard. Yeah. But he proved uh, maybe his, you know, John Paddock uh, prepared him for it. I'm not sure how he, he seemed so ready, but nothing seems to phase the kid. He's just, uh, he always, he reminds me of uh, Austin Matthews when I first met him. They always bring in the top eligible draft picks to the playoffs and whoever's going to be in the top 10 of the draft, they show up and we usually get them on Hockey Night in Canada. And if I was to describe Matthews, it was like bemused. He, he wasn't you know, at all impressed by all the celebrity of it. Uh, and Connor's got a little of that in him too. He just, just unfazed by, uh, you know, ask me anything, I'm ready. And, uh, and I, I mean, you might remember at the start of the year when uh, they asked him about playing extra minutes and he said, yeah, I like hockey. doesn't bother me. So he, <laughs> he's got a, he's, you need to have a wink to, to survive in this racket. He does. And, and, you know, he's a player who wants to be out there in the big moment and yeah. wants the puck on his stick and, you know, not just letting the game come to him. He's, he's going after it, which is, which is really fun to watch. I thought it was a really big moment in the uh, World Junior Championship when Dennis Williams stuck with him and Stan Coven uh, because that was the game that finally Shane Wright seemed to be going uh, at a little higher level as they entered into probably was a Slovakia overtime, you know, the semis or quarters, I can't remember. Yeah. But it, uh, there was an example of uh, the coach knowing, no, no, don't back off of Bedard. This is now, you know, everything's on the line. Start with Bedard. And they did and they won. Yeah, incredibly cool. Um, you mentioned the Madame. It made me think about the University Cup and, um, you know, Gardner McDougall and the job he did with the UNB uh, Reds to win that. And 
what he's done, the Memorial Cup and potentially Canada at the U18s, um, but also the PWHL and the success that they've had. And the game feels like it's just at a, a different level right now across the country and the continent. No, you're right. And and for Toronto to have the NHL All-Star Weekend, uh, they had uh, at Scotiabank Arena, the PWHL filled the joint. And obviously at Mattamy, it was incredible to see that uh, New Year's Day debut for, uh, albeit Toronto didn't have their finest game that day, but uh, Howie Draper, you know, uh, historic 26 years mm-hmm. with the Pandas at University of Alberta. He's coaching New York and there's uh, just tons of players in that game. Um, Natalie Spooner, you know, she... As you see, she's on a tear right now and uh, couldn't be happier for her because it was almost like it had passed her by. You know, there was a new generation of women that they were going to use to shine a light on the new league. But she's just right there, as she always has been. She did uh, Amazing Ray. She did Battle of the Blades. She was unbelievable, Darren, on the Battle of the Blades program. Any of those brave enough to come and do that show? I mean, yes. I don't know where they find Did we lose Ron completely? Ah, well, let me know if we can squeeze him in for one more minute and one final question. Um, If we can't, um, we'll say thanks to Ron McLean for jumping us. Okay, so he's, okay. Uh, Battle of the Blades started at Maple Leaf. Yeah. It sounds like uh, Rachel Holman's eager to get in, and you must have the same link. Congratulator, so you... <laughs> unbelievable performance. Uh, yeah, so I can't wait to hear Rachel, and uh, but, yeah, send her our pride. It's but, just amazing. But before we let you go, I did want to ask you about just a little preview for the playoffs. It, you know, with you would know the last time it's been this exciting in Canada with four legit Stanley Cup contenders in the Leafs, the Jets, the Oilers, and the Canucks. It's, I think the spring is going to be a lot of fun. I do too. I mean, uh, you never mind 1-8, 116 uh, divisional brackets. As you say, uh, the, the hockey couldn't be better right now. I do agree with you and Rod, or at least Rod, uh, that maybe we should get to 20 teams into the playoffs. I think that would be great. And I do feel like, uh, obviously, you're in California and Rod's in Florida, and all the talent on trade deadline went south. So it's uh, your representative <laughs> of, uh, of the good acquisitions yes. at the trade deadline. But it'll be an amazing playoffs. And I feel like uh, if I was to predict, you know, I, I think hunger is going to be so important important and you know who's hungry and that's david so that would be it's not a you know rocket science to pick the oilers but i i feel like they're the ones to be even though they're kind of foggy right now yeah i would uh, tend to agree with you when they turn it on and decide they want to play um i don't know that anybody can skate with them ron i appreciate this uh thanks for jumping in thanks darren and again congrats to rachel you bet. Ron McLean joining us, Hockey Night in Canada, and is your Rachel Holman is on deck in the queue. So from hockey to curling, two great Canadian sports and um, two great Canadian icons. And Ron McLean, Rachel Holman, back to back as we roll here an hour or two on the Rod Peterson Show, watching across the country on the Game Plus Television Network, streaming on YouTube Live, or maybe you're listening to the podcast on Apple or Spotify. Did you know that you can help save a life? And you can start right now. Stem cells from male donors increase chances of positive outcomes for patients, yet they only make up 40% of our registry. Today, there are hundreds of people in Canada searching for their life-saving match. You can be a patient's best hope. Be a hero by registering with Canadian Blood Services Stem Cell Registry now. I'm Bridget Laquette. I'm a First Nation Olympic silver medalist, and I'm proud to represent Indigenous hockey players across Canada. Each year, hundreds of Canadians need a stem cell transplant from an unrelated donor to save their life. Anyone can have a hard time finding a stem cell match, 
but for Indigenous peoples, it can be even more difficult because just over 1% of prospective donors on Canada's stem cell registry are of Indigenous backgrounds. Be a hero. Join me in Hockey Gives Blood in helping to make a life-saving difference to those in need. Register today at blood.ca slash be a hero. One of hip hop's finest, Ice Cube. You better check yourself or you wreck yourself because I'm back. Straight into Canada tour. April 28th, Moose Jaw Event Center. I can't believe today was a good day. Among the most influential rappers of all time, Ice Cube. On sale now at sasktix.ca or the Moose Jaw Event Center box office. The sports landscape continues to change, and teams and facilities are under more pressure to provide online and in-venue entertainment. They need the right team to deliver their product. Look no further than IKS Live. We provide service across North America and produce the best fan experience across all platforms. Hi, my name is Logan Stadkoven. And I'm Connor Bedard. We're both Hockey Gives Blood player ambassadors and proud to be blood donors. There are thousands of patients each year in Canada that rely on a generous stranger to save their life. Please book an appointment today to donate blood at blood.ca slash HGB. Business owners and marketers. Okay, we know you think we're pretty cool. That's why we want you to share in the coolness factor. Partner with the Rod Peterson Show and market your business every weekday to sports lovers just like yourself. Take advantage of our many cost-effective commercial and promotional opportunities. Tell the world about your business. Yes, the world. Thanks to Game Plus TV and the Rod Peterson Digital Network. Contact us today and find out how you can be a part of Canada's fastest-growing sports talk show, the Rod Peterson Show. Right now. Yeah, Rod's not here, so I'm hosting the show. How about that? <laughs> I always love that they made a graphic for the odd times I get to host the show. Um, that's the IKS Media Group that does just an awesome job. Uh, the two Joshes upstairs on the, uh, the animations and stuff. Uh, Absolutely love it, guys, and uh, welcome back to the program. Rod's not here, so uh, for the next uh, 20 minutes, we're taking you home here on Hour 2 or Episode 2 of the podcast here of the day. Darren DuPont with you. Ron McLean, big thanks to him for joining us last segment, and a big thanks to uh, Rachel Holman for joining us, fresh off a championship at the Women's Worlds. Uh, and now back to family duty, Rachel. Uh, how have the last couple <laughs> of days been since the win in Sydney? Uh, it's been a lot of fun, uh, kind of connecting with everyone and, and, uh, getting lots of congrats and trying to get back to, to family life. It's, uh, March break madness in, in my house, not, uh, the basketball kind, but, um, yeah, full, uh, back to enjoying family time. So what's the season look like for you now? Is, is that the end for you? I know there's a couple of, uh, is there not a couple of events still on the grand slam tour ahead? Uh, what's next? Or do you get a chance to break yeah, for a bit? One more <laughs> two weeks, and then we're back to Toronto for the last yes. slam, and then uh, that'll be our season. Thankfully, we get a little bit of rest and uh, <laughs> start up again in August. <clears throat> Where will the week in in Sydney um, rate for you in terms of your curling career? <laughs> Uh, it's definitely a week we're never going to forget uh, to be able to win gold in Canada. I've never experienced that before. We won in Beijing. Um, we had a, a small group. Uh, my phone kind of showed us. It, it shows previous pictures on this day years ago, and it showed um, the small group of family we had. And then we compared the picture to, to Sunday's picture, and it was like quadrupled the people there and our friends and family. It was just a really cool photo um, from 2017. And then this year, it's. Uh, Cape Breton really made us feel like home. Um, everyone we met, they were so kind. They wanted to give us um, bits and pieces of Cape Breton and, and different kinds of gifts, and they were just so sweet and welcoming. 
Um, and the, the arena was just electric. They were cheering hard for us um, and, and kept believing in us in the final when it wasn't looking so good. They, uh, they kept chanting and, and cheering. We felt that. So we uh, can't thank them enough. It's so cool, and I know you've had a, an, you know an amazing year and and stringing together all the wins. But there are so many good teams at the world level. I mean, the Canadian level for sure, but at the world level, so many good teams. So you know, I go to late in that game, and and you got to make the split shot for three in that moment. And yes, you haven't lost, and you know we sit here and think, man, and she makes it look so easy. But in that situation, on that stage, when so much is on the line and there's that crowd, how do you how do you make that shot? And what's going through your mind when when you're sitting in the hack, but also when you make the shot and the crowd goes crazy? Uh, yeah, it was uh, definitely a moment uh, I won't forget. The um, the front end saw it. I wasn't sure if it was quite there. I kind of only had to hit it in one spot just because they had two other ones. Um, on the on the back there that could out counted ours. Um, it was really important to get two. Um, and when you play a split shot like that, uh, there's a chance that you throw it through the house or that you hit it too hard and you only get your one. So it was important to get two, but um, even more important in a, in a big swing for us to be able to get the three. And it was just a, a huge team shot. And when it came to rest, um, like honestly, right until the end, I was like, not sure that we made it because it was uh, definitely a challenging spot and um, we counted three and the, the arena just erupted and um, the game wasn't over. We were only up two. It's five rock rules. So just trying to keep our composure and keep our emotions in check because we knew we had a really big end in 10 to be able to try and finish it off. We So, I mean, we love the energy and the excitement, but we made sure that we uh, kind of kept our emotions as calm as you could be in that moment, but um, definitely something to look back on and just feel that energy and that excitement. It was uh, a big turning point in the game. <clears throat> was there a, a moment for you, um, you know, looking back at, at seasons past, you know, that kind of flipped things for you to get you back to this point to be so dominant, like, a, you know, a, a key experience, learning experience, or, or what, what do you credit to uh, where your team is at right now? Um, yeah, I think uh, lots of experience. We've been in a lot of Scotty's finals. Obviously, there's a lot of talent in Canada, and it's hard to get out of Canada. We have, um, I mean, su such depth. And, and our Scotty shows, you know, we, we have our provincial winners, but then we've also had to add our wildcard teams in advance of the Scotties themselves because there's so many good teams, um, maybe three or four within the same province, and we don't want to miss out on that opportunity in nationals to make – our Canadians uh, as strong of a field as we can to prep the winner for for Worlds because it's such a grind. There's more games at Worlds. There's more pressure. Everyone's watching. Um, every game is on TV, whether you're on a winning streak or a losing streak. Uh, you never get a break. So um, we uh, we knew that the, the work that we put in and from our experiences, obviously it was Tracy's first Worlds, and she sure didn't let that show. Uh, she played phenomenal and the team just rose to the occasion. We've all been to worlds before the three of us have been to worlds before and, and same with Rochelle, our fifth. Um, our coaches had, had been there and, and knew what it took. And um, I think over the years just I mean, we've all been kind of growing our families and that that takes a toll on the body and takes a bit of time to recover. So I think um just our support system really has helped us get to where we are we are right now and to the level we've been able to get back to. I like that you mentioned Tracy, and I wanted to ask you about her addition to the team and and just the impact she made, not only getting you know and winning the Scotties, but but at her first Worlds, because that's not an easy thing for her to step into as well in such a a key spot for you. Yeah, she. Uh, I mean, it, it's hard to believe that it was her first Worlds. We kept randomly coming up. I kept remembering it maybe halfway through the week and. Um, she just played phenomenal. We uh, we really stuck together as a team, and it sure didn't feel like it was anyone's first Worlds. We had that experience. She's been in lots of big games over her career and just never clinched that Scotty's victory. So uh, it was really special to win that with her for her first time um, and just see her reaction and, and live that that first win um, through her eyes. And uh, I mean, special for all of us and for different reasons. And then uh, being able to go to Worlds and when we beat Korea in that semifinal, like that's we talked about it after. It's 
got to be the worst game in curling, that semifinal game. Um, because if you win, you know you're bringing home a medal for Canada. And if you lose, you might not. Um, and, and trying to get back up for that bronze medal game is never an easy task. Uh, and so just to be able to to win that that semifinal and the emotion from that. Um, a lot of people were saying, you know, it looked like Canada and Switzerland in that semifinal after they won, had won the whole thing. Well, that's kind of what it feels like. It kind of feels like, yes, like we did good enough to get for sure a medal. Um, and then we're gonna reset overnight and gear up for, for the gold. Cause obviously both teams are gunning for the gold at that point, but um, definitely some uh, relief after winning that semifinal. Um, but we knew that we didn't want to stop there and, and, and continue to, to try and get that goal for Canada. It's, it's been missing for a long time, and it's, I can't describe the feeling to, to bring that back for Canada. Unbelievable. I, I, I know it's, a, and before we let you go, I know it's a little early for this, but I'm sure, you know, you're thinking about it. We look ahead to 26 and, and, the, and the Olympics, and, I'm, and I know you'd love another crack at getting to the Olympics and representing Canada. And the way you're playing now, um, we sit here as Canadians and think that those Olympic Games can't come soon enough. Are, are, is that in your mind a little bit already? Like, hey, let's go. I wish it was this, this year already. Next week, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, uh, it's it's definitely a long ways out, and um, obviously a huge goal of our team. Um, but to be able to, you know, come up short last year at the Scotties and reevaluate where we were as a team, and and knowing the work we had to put in to get back to where we wanted to be, um, it just shows us that we know what we need to do to get on top. And then, um, yeah, just taking it one year at a time. There's still uh, another year at the Scotties, and then. Um, into trials and hopefully the Olympics. So uh, we're, it's definitely a, a long-term goal for us right now. It feels like a long time. Um, and we're just trying to kind of savor this success and don't want to, don't want to take the time to let it sink in and, and enjoy it with our friends and family. Well, you've earned it. Enjoy it. We'll let you go. I know you're busy. No downtime for you. World champion, uh, Rachel Holman. Congratulations <laughs> and thanks for coming on. Thank you so much. All right, Rachel Holman joining us. Family duty already, uh, and uh, right back to it. Love it. Um, one of the best performances we've seen um, in the sport and, and one of the best seasons we've seen from uh, from a curler period. Rachel Holman, their team, just dominant and uh, winning that world championship at home. Amazing, amazing moment. All right, we're going to dive into the comments. So if you've got some questions, I haven't had the comments open uh, for this uh, part of the show, but I will dive into them next, and I will even check into the text line. So uh, fire them my way. It's just me and you. It's an AMA. Ask me anything, and we'll uh, dive into it in the final segment of the show. Uh, Ten minutes still left here on the RP Show, Game Plus TV, YouTube Live, or if you're listening, on the podcast, which is available on Apple and Spotify. The sports landscape continues to change and teams and facilities are under more pressure to provide online and in-venue entertainment. They need the right team to deliver their product. Look no further than IKS Live. We provide service across North America and produce the best fan experience across all platforms. Foreigner, live in Moose Jaw. Foreigner is back. The Farewell Canada Tour. You're as cold as ice. May 13th, the Moose Jaw Event Center. Foreigner, with special guest, Headpins. Tickets on sale now at sasktix.ca and the Moose Jaw Event Center box office. this look familiar your fans deserve an incredible arena experience it's time for an upgrade stunning graphics Re 
revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. BDG, always delivering the best fan experience. Hi, my name is Logan Stankoven. And I'm Connor Bedard. We're both Hockey Gives Blood player ambassadors and proud to be blood donors. There are thousands of patients each year in Canada that rely on a generous stranger to save their life. Please book an appointment today to donate blood at blood.ca slash HGB. IKS Game Day wishes to congratulate the city of Esteban and Affinity Place on their brand new center ice display. This state-of-the-art score clock features five LED faces with full motion graphics, scoring integration, and our new halo mounting system. If it's time for an upgrade, let us show you how to deliver the best fan experience. You can find us at IKSGameDay.com. At the Key Auto Group pre-owned division, we're bringing back that new car feeling. No matter what, it's new to you and priced just right. No hidden fees, prices you can trust, an upfront buying experience. And it's all at keyautogroup.ca. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have utilizing a fully integrated 360 degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. You got something to say? You want to add to the show? What are you waiting for? Don't just sit there. Say something. Now, back to the studio with Rod. One final segment. Darren DuPont with you here. Overtime. Brought to you by Overtime Hockey Lanes in Calgary. Visit them today. Checking into the comments. Steven in North Dakota. Says, admit it, Darren. Rod is at golf tea time this afternoon. You want to tell him or should I? I don't think Rod would uh, book a tee time or be on a golf course anytime soon. Rod hates golf because Rod's not good at golf, doesn't like golfing, doesn't enjoy it, so he's not golfing. Um, but he's got some things that he had to take care of today. Um, a lot of questions came in. I know for Ron McLean, do you think the PWHL will expand to other cities in North America? Um, and do you think the Coyotes are on the move? If so, what city I would say, yes, the PWHL will likely expand. I hope they expand. Um, it's had a lot of success wherever it's gone so far. They've got a good model, but I hope they don't expand too fast or too big, too fast. Um, coyotes, if they leave the desert, I still hope they don't, but if they leave the desert, I would put Utah, Atlanta, and Houston as my top three choices where it will likely end up. Um, what else do we got here in the YouTube comments? Swept off our skates to curling royalty. Approved. That was from Steven. Um, Wayne Victoria says, I watched every minute of the Women's World Curling Championships. Loved seeing Rachel Holman and her team win it. Congratulations, Rachel. Outstanding year. Only six losses all year. Wow, that's from John Ohm. Another Wayne uh, message says, congrats, Rachel, on a great year and for bringing back the gold to Canada again. Uh, lots of comments here. Holman for Prime Minister, you rock. So people loving the uh, Rachel Holman interview. Um, how many players aside for the flag football you guys are broadcasting next month? Colin, uh, I'll defer that to Rod. I won't be going next month uh, to be a part of that one. Um, I'll be here. Uh, well, not here. I'll be in Canada for that for uh, the next month um, and a bit. To the text line, 902-518-3033. Still a couple of minutes to get your questions in. Uh, Bill in uh, Ontario says, you cover a lot of curling events, Darren. Just wondering if you were in competitive curling or just media. Bill in Brantford. Um, I played a tiny bit of curling, not competitively. I, I think it was one bond spiel. Um, we did okay. I think we lost in the A side final, but just media. Uh, started in 2017, um, did the uh, Saskatchewan Junior Provincial Curling Championships. That was fun. My first foray into it, just a one off. Um, and then in the pandemic, um, um, 
had a chance with Matt Dunstone, who organized the Best of the West uh, Championship. Really big field. That was uh, held in Regina. Got to do some play-by-play -play in that. Dean Clyder did some color commentary. Rylan Clyder's dad and coach. Rylan Clyder made it all the way to the Saskatchewan final this year. Um, did some games with the late Warren Woods. Um, and then this winter, got my opportunity to uh, uh, get the call up to be the voice of the Tankard and the Scotties in Saskatchewan. The two uh, provincial championships been booked for next year, and we have found out they're going to be in Kindersley, Saskatchewan, early in January. Both events in the same week over my birthday, too. So we're going to be celebrating uh the birthday at either the red lion or the uh, kindersley inn so that should be a lot of fun in january of uh next year um and jeff writes in on the text line 902-518-3033 says the nfl kickoff needed to get away from the fair catch it will be nice to see the kick ran back yeah we hope so there are so many good athletes that will now have more of an opportunity to be a part of the game. Um, not that they weren't, but they just sat there and watched the kick go through the end zone. Um, it will make betting more interesting. Will the kick be returned or not? There are a lot of different things uh, with the NFL kickoff rule to try and make that a part of the game. I think they needed to take this opportunity to try and, you know, advance the rules to promote more kickoff returns rather than just get rid of special teams altogether and scrimmage at say the 35 or the 40 yard line. So I love this approach. I think it's great for the game um, as, we, uh, as we move forward. And I'm sure the CFL will adopt something similar. And I think that will be good for the game too, although the CFL has more kick returns than the NFL does. So not quite as big of a problem. Uh, last minute of play in the show. Final uh, bit of homework or homework, housekeeping here. We can check in on uh, the poll question. The poll question today, how do you feel about the NFL kickoff rule change? And it's flipped. 52% now saying they don't like it. It was 52% saying they like it. Um, now it's saying 52% no. Um, great. Rod's back in the chair tomorrow for the show. Our final show of the week tomorrow. So it'll be a football Thursday of sorts. I believe Jim Barker logged in, ready to go. Uh, locked in and ready to go for tomorrow. So stay tuned for that. Friday, programming note, good Friday. We will be off the air, no show Friday. So until tomorrow. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks to Rod Black. Thanks to the CFLPA. Thanks to Ron McLean and Rachel Holman. And thanks most of all to you for watching the RP Show. We'll see you tomorrow. Who has more fun than us? <laughs>